Right, so I um, thought I'd do a log of my six servo wing Vixen, um, how I've set it up. And now I just had it at this first competition over the weekend. And you know that you've probably done something right when strangers walk up to you and compliment on how nicely the model is turning. Uh, so, anyway, I mean, I know that's what the Vixen does nicely anyway, but um, with the six servo wing, I just... Anyway, you be the deciding factor there as to whether you think it might make a difference or not. So... <clears throat> Um, so let's start off in the clean mode. So you can see there's quite a bit of um, differential on the outboard aileron on the tip. Um, and a progressive aileron all the way out. So in thermal mode, it's, I use that for when I've found lift and I'm circling. So let's just say I'm in a, mm, a right hand thermal turn and I have thermal in which is about three millimeters of camber across the trailing edge. Thermal. About eighth of an inch <coughs> across the trailing edge. So I'm in a thermal turn to the right and I'm having to apply a bit of opposite aileron to stop it rolling in. So. That's the left aileron there. You'll notice that there is no downward travel on the outboard aileron, and there's a progressive travel as we come in downward. As we come in, uh, I didn't want to add any more angle of attack on that wing because it's probably already, if I'm down low, I'm probably already working that section of wing pretty hard anyway, and it's probably getting close to the edge. So adding angle of attack via the control surface I didn't want to do and it seems to work rather well it was very stable in a, in a tight thermal turn um, so you can see there's a lot of um, differential there not so much on the mid panel or the center panel control surface so um, a bit of difference on the, on the, on the middle panel. Uh, yeah, I, I could give measurements, but that would just take for ages. Just eye, eyeball it to start with and tune it from there, from a, from a 3mm trailing edge or 1 8 trailing edge. Cruise. Thermal. That's thermal. Cruise. Cruise. The other setting I have for positive camber is what I call hovering because I couldn't find a wave file to say float or crawl or whatever. So it's actually six mil or about quarter inch. Hovering. And it does hover quite nicely, particularly uh, if you've just arrived in a patch of air and you, you just click in the hover and it'll just park itself without having to turn too far. But as far as that's concerned, it wasn't meant for turning. So um, the standard differential applies. You can see it's actually got 100% differential on the inboard flap. There. All I want to do is re just reduce the the lift on this side um, rather than increase the drag. So that's hovering or float. Um, for coming back from downwind, I have two settings which are exactly the opposite to the other two, which is 3 mil and 6 mil. So I've got a, a, what I call a distance, distance. and a Cruise. speed. Speed. That's speed being a 6 mil one. School's out there. Um, the, distance. the distance setting is basically putting, putting the ruler across the, uh, pulling the ruler across the bottom of the wing routine. Um, to intersect as many points as you can, the hinge line, the trailing edge of the control surface and the bottom of the wing. That's sort of uh, what I used to get that one, but uh, the school's out on the 6mm one on the speed setting, not very really sure. I used it on the weekend and yeah, look, it came up wind fine. It certainly didn't seem to be um, sinking like I've put in too much, but um, yeah, I, I think the weight the weight of the plane is probably have a greater bearing on, on the, um, the trailing edge, but 
Uh, landing. So I have that set up on my gimbal stick so that I go straight into landing mode. Oh, if I can do this. So from here. Landing. Cruise. Landing. Cruise. So all of the landing settings are switched off while I'm in cruise mode and conversely. Uh, and the landing has priority over all of the other trailing edge settings. So I can be in speed, I can be in thermal and op um, um, operate the landing mode and it will override whatever other trailing edge settings are there. So the landing, the landing I have, uh, well that. There's a little bit of up aileron, probably about mm, six mil. Six mil of up aileron on the very tip. And uh, I've got, got to tell you, when this thing comes in, it is walking pace. It's really good. Really good. Now, the settings for the throws. So if I give, um, let's say I give a, a left aileron command. I've been thrown off course. I give a left aileron command. Nothing changes. If I give a right aileron command. You can watch what happens. So the two outboard ailerons go above neutral well and truly. And, and the inboard, or the flap, for want of a better word, is greatly reduced. And there's a boot full of rudder in there as well. And that's, um, it worked very well uh, on the way in to the landing spot. Cruise. That pretty much covers the six servo wing settings. So that's in cruise mode, thermal, thermal. Hovering. hovering, cruise, distance. distance. I think the distance setting is pretty much the same um, differential as the cruise mode. Cruise speed. Yeah, as is the speed. Hey, what's going on there? That's a new one. Hmm, that's interesting. I've got a little click on the other side here, which didn't happen on the weekend. And there's a bit of grit in the control surface. We'll have a look at that. Okay, well, that's long enough. Um, oh, the actual setup for the aileron. Um, so, when putting the, putting the uh, servo into the wing, wait a minute, let me just go over here to the roller. Okay, so that's the control horn that I made there. I made two of them. Um, I rejected this one just because it got a little bit thin up on the top there. Oops, got a little bit too thin there. But um, you can see from the roller that it's about three quarters, three quarters of an inch. I'm a millimeters person. I'm doing this because I think I'm the only just one of the only metric people that are flying a Vixen at the moment that I'm aware of. So there's uh, three quarters of an inch there. It's about a quarter of an inch high. About a quarter of an inch high. And uh, yeah, maybe three sixteenths at the back. Not even. No, not even. Where am I? Sixteenths. No, not even. Whoops, sorry. Three thirty toots. Told you I'm not a inches person so that was glued in um, below the surface you can see that the control horn is, is pretty well flush uh, and you can see the I put a patch of carbon or another patch of material in where the servo goes because you can see some deformation there like where the servo um, as careful as I was, I, I didn't want it to, you know, I wanted it to be as good as the, the inboard wing, but it just didn't didn't work out that way. Um, what else? Oh, one last thing. Oh, I've got 10 minutes already. That's a bit long. Um, the, 
little tail cone, tail cone doohickey. I actually had that in there with um, what's that black stuff? Um, oh, the name escapes me. JB Weld, sorry, JB Weld. But it it separated for whatever reason. So uh, when I got back, I put a little patch of carbon and CA in there, and uh, that's yeah. There was JB Weld left on the surface of this, and there was JB Weld stuck to the wire, and it had just it had just split. No no explanation there, but that's not gonna. All right, I think that's about it. That's well and truly long enough. Um, yeah. Okay. Over and out.